You probably can't remember every single fact or skill you were taught when you were at school. Our memories fade over time, and if we don't practice the skills that we've been taught regularly, we eventually forget how to use them at all. That doesn't just apply to individual people, though. That applies to the whole human race. There's plenty of evidence that our ancestors had skills and abilities that we lack today. And this video contains all the proof that you'll ever need. In the middle of 2014, a team of archaeologists working at the historical site of Farash in Iran's Sayamara Dam Reservoir made a stunning discovery, a human-made water system that's more than 5,000 years old. Although the site is known as a dam, hence the clue in the name, the dam that stands there today is comparatively a recent creation. Nobody had any idea that it sat right on top of a much more ancient waterway, and yet the pipes of that waterway are still there for all to see. Perhaps we shouldn't be so surprised. The ancient Persians were masters at building waterways and were capable of building aqueducts long before the Romans. This waterway isn't an aqueduct, but it's an impressive system of pipes connecting a small pool to the site of an old settlement across a long distance. The pipes appear to have been made from mud baked and shaped in the region. The biggest problem facing the archaeologists now is that they have a race against time to excavate the entire pipeline before the new dam is filled and the old system is flooded forever. Fans of classic movies may already be familiar with the Boca della Verita from its appearance in the movie Roman Holiday in 1953, which starred Aubrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck. In the film, this enormous ancient stone, the name of which translates as the Mouth of Truth, is said to be able to tell when someone is telling lies. All they have to do is place their hand inside the mouth of the sculpture and speak. If they tell a lie, the mouth is supposed to snap shut and sever their hand. Some people believe the story was just made up from the film and that the stone is nothing more than an ancient and ornate drain cover. But who would go to the trouble of carving the face of the mighty sea god Oceanus in a simple drain cover? And why? We prefer to believe the legends associated with the 2200-year-old marble disc, which claim that the story in the movie is actually based on an ancient truth. Forget Jerry Springer's lie detectors, this statue was sorting truth from lies thousands of years before Jerry was born. A little over 4,000 years ago, a brand new pigment was invented in ancient Egypt. Today we call it Egyptian blue, and it was originally developed to adorn a crown on a famous bust of Nefertiti. We have no way of knowing whether the chemists who came up with it were aware of what they were doing at the time, but there's far more to this pigment than just a pretty color. This brilliant shade of blue can reduce energy consumption and can also amplify solar energy output if applied in the right way. In early 2020, a German research team even used Egyptian blue to create new nano sheets for infrared imaging. To give the substance its proper name, Egyptian blue is a calcium copper silicate and is thought to be one of the first ever artificial colors ever created by human hands. It's a stunning color and was used in the time of the New Kingdom to decorate everything from statues to sarcophagi. When a very thin layer is exfoliated from a grain of the pigment, a nano sheet 100,000 times thinner than a human hair can be created, and the properties of that sheet are ideal for optical imaging. Now that we know that, this ancient substance might be responsible for the next great era of microscopy. Here's a question that occurs to many people who've studied the great Egyptian artworks and monuments of the ancient past. How did they cut through massive, heavy, thick stones and rocks with seemingly the same level of ease we cut through butter today? The largest construction companies in the world would struggle to replicate Egypt's great monuments. Yet we're asked to believe that the ancient Egyptians created them with nothing more than basic hand tools. We're not so sure about that. We think they may have had powerful saws. The most obvious sign of that comes from the sarcophagus inside the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The marks on the bottom of the box could only have been made by a saw and would have had to have been a very large saw too. We can't say for sure what kind of teeth the saw might have had, but there's little disputing the clear evidence that a saw was used. 
What happened to the stone-cutting technology of the ancient Egyptians? And why have we never found any modern trace of it? The Inca site of Tapan is stunningly beautiful. In fact, it's so beautiful that you might be inclined to just stand back and admire it rather than thinking about how it was made. We're inviting you to think about that right now, though, because science has never been able to tell us who could have taught the Inca how to design and create an artificially irrigated garden. That's what Tipa is. It might look like a gorgeous monument, but it has a practical purpose. Some historians, including Peruvian Dr. Luis Antonio Pardo, think that it may not be an Inca creation at all. He feels it might have been left behind by an even older forgotten civilization, and the Inca people simply found it and made use of it. Because of the stepped nature of Tapan and the many different wet and dry levels it includes, it's thought that this was a large-scale agricultural laboratory. Using Tapan, the Inca could determine which kind of crops could grow in different types of environment and use that information to inform their crop plantation strategy elsewhere. Creating it required some seriously advanced knowledge of hydraulics, though, and we have no idea where it could have come from. Our next technological phenomenon may sound a little fanciful, but it's mentioned in so many different places all over the world that it merits closer investigation. It's the mystery of lamps that burn forever. No source of light other than the sun ought to burn indefinitely, but there are stories from all over the planet of tombs that contained lamps that were still burning when they were discovered and opened thousands of years after they'd been sealed. The lamp that stood over the door of the temple in Egypt's Jupiter Ammon was said by the writer Plutarch to carry on burning even in wind and rain. There are records of similar lamps at the Temple of Aderbane in Armenia and the Temple of Apollo Carneus at Serene. They've even been recorded in England, when King Henry VIII turned against the Catholic Church and ordered the destruction of Catholic structures, a tomb that had been sealed since the 4th century was disturbed as the church above it was demolished. Inside that tomb was, as you may have guessed, a lamp that was still burning. Could all of these lamps have been connected to natural sources of gas inside rocks, or did our ancestors know a way of keeping a flame alive for all eternity? Right at the start of this video, we marveled at an ancient water system created by the Persians. Now, here's one created by the ancient Chinese that might be even more impressive. It's known as Dujiangyan, and it's the oldest dam-free irrigation system in the known world. So perfect is its design that it's still used to ferry water to 50 cities within the Sichuan province today, despite being more than 2,200 years old. The ancient architect responsible for its design was a man named Li Bing, a genius of an engineer who'd managed to identify that the reason the Minjiang River flooded so regularly was that the snow in the mountains melted every summer and ran into the river. To solve the problem, he carved a channel straight through Mount Yulai to redirect the water to the Chengdu Plain. It took eight years to dig through the mountain, but eight years is nothing compared to the two millennia his work has survived for. It seems he knew more about water and waterways than any of his peers. He was a true visionary. It might look like an exceptionally ornate piece of desk art, but there's far more to this strange device than its fabulous design. Identified and recorded by the Greek scientist Ptolemy, this is a torquetum, and it's a medieval marvel. It can measure three different sets of astronomical coordinates, equatorial, ecliptic, and horizon. Once the measurements are taken, it can convert between one set of data and another and calculate the relationship between the three without any further input from the user of the device. To put it another way, this is a computer that doesn't use electricity and requires no programming. Although Ptolemy was fascinated by the Torquetum, he didn't design it. It's thought that Jabir M. Afla was responsible for that somewhere between the 12th and 13th centuries. Sadly, no physical examples of the device from that era still exist today, but we do have some spectacular specimens from the 16th century and a golden Torquetum from the 18th century France, too. The calculations it performs might be considered relatively simple by modern standards, but at the time of its invention, they ought to have been almost impossible. 
These days, we're all conscious of the carbon footprint and energy status of our devices. Energy-saving bulbs are considered to be more ethical purchases than the alternative, and we're reminded to turn off our lights every time we leave a room. Apparently, we're not the first generation of humans to think this way. Archaeologists gained entry to a tomb in Nanchang, China in November 2015, and when they did, they found that the nobleman buried within it had gone to his grave with a pair of 2,000-year-old adjustable lanterns. The lamps, which are shaped like geese and crafted from solid bronze, come complete with a primitive type of lampshade shaped like a fish. The shade would have sheltered the flame and protected it from the wind, but it also would have allowed the user to adjust the brightness of the light. That isn't the only feature that would be familiar to a modern age buyer. Experts believe that the fat, hollow bodies of the geese once held water into which soot and fumes would have been dissolved. The purpose of this was probably cosmetic as it would have prevented the lamp from leaving dark stains on its surroundings, but it was environmentally friendly too. We'll give you a little warning before we proceed on to our next piece of technology. This one's a little gruesome. Deep in the crypt, below the chapel of Capella San Severo in Naples, Italy, you'll find two artifacts that are referred to somewhat cryptically as anatomical machines. That's a nice way of saying that they're a pair of human bodies, of which the entire circulatory systems of the deceased have somehow been preserved perfectly for more than 200 years. We can thank Raimondo di Sangro, the former prince of San Severo, for their existence. He was an eccentric, known at the time for his interest in science and mysticism. It's even said that he once invented a carriage pulled by a wooden horse that could cross bodies of water. There's no evidence of that, but his two skeletal sculptures are still on display for the whole world to see. As well as still possessing all of their veins, the bodies also contain arteries, organs, and musculature. Nobody knows how the veins were preserved in this way. The injection of some kind of preservative of Raimondo's own creation has been preserved, and if that's right, this is one of the first ever functional examples of plastination. When do you think the first working robot was born? If you had to guess, would you say that it was sometime within the past century? If so, you'd be wrong by a long distance. Here's a mechanical sculpture of a child created almost 250 years ago and capable of writing under its own power. Designed by French watchmaker Pierre Jacques Droz, the statue can write up to 40 characters at a time and can produce different words and sentences by replacing some of its 40 interior cams. In a manner of speaking, this means that the robot can be programmed. Underneath its ornate exterior, it contains more than 6,000 parts, an almost unbelievable feat of engineering that only serves to underline its inventor's phenomenal skill as a watchmaker. He finished building the automation in 1770 and astonished audiences all over France with his demonstrations of its abilities. It's thought that this was the first time in human history that automated writing had been shown to be possible. This wasn't Jacquet Draws' only robot, he also made a robotic musician and a robotic draughtsman, along with hundreds of mechanical birds. You might even think of him as the father of robotics. When it's hot outside and you don't want your food to perish, you should put it in the refrigerator or the freezer. As both devices require the use of electricity, you might wonder what people did to keep their food fresh during ancient times, when electricity wasn't around. Wonder no longer, because we can tell you, they put their food inside a yakchal. This is yet another amazing piece of ancient Persian engineering with a history that goes back 2400 years. Translate the name Yakchal into English and you'll get Ice Pit, which is a strong clue as to how these structures work. Each Yakchal was built to a height of around 60 feet, then supplied with water from nearby pools, springs, and reservoirs. Wind catchers inside the Yakchal cooled the water down and the water turned to ice. It froze whatever was inside. Even today, the surviving Yakchal units are very cold when you walk inside them. To keep the contents of a yakchal safe from the intense heat of summer, the external walls were coated in a mixture of goat hair, clay, and egg white to reflect the heat. That must have made a terrible smell, but it was effective. 
subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.